Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fiercest of them all? Welcome back to another video guys. Today we are of course talking about Pulibororra and look at that face. I am so happy that I am able to review her. She is the Pulib that came out in 2012 as part of the second steampunk season by Groove Inc. And this steampunk series also has the name Eclipse. So she has very orange toned stock. And I think that she is just a fabulous doll. So let's just jump right into it. First of all, I want to start with her hat. As you can see over here, the hat's main material is fake snake leather as well as some parts of fake leather that has a darker hue. And then you have all kinds of brassy details. For example, this amazing watch that you can see right in the center. And when you turn the doll a bit, you will see that there are details all around. The only problem I have with this hat really is that it just has one little beret. Here you can see it holding onto the doll's wig and the hat is a little heavy. I know that it is supposed to go on sideways like that. I wish there would have been another way to secure it on her head. Now the next detail that I would like to talk about is her little monocle over here. She has a monocle just like Pulip Eos who came out two years prior. I think that they did a better job with this one. Not only because I do prefer the details on it more, but also because it actually has felt on the inside, so it does not rub as much against her face up, which is a complete win in my book. Because when it comes to Pulip Eos's monocle, I am kind of scared to put it on her, but I have less doubt with this one. The only thing about this is that it closes in the back with the buckle that you can see over here. And Eos's monocle does close with Velcro and if this was Velcro it would have been easier to adjust the size. But other than that, I think it is a very nice accessory and very much adds value to her steampunk look. Now let's talk about Pule Borora's face-up. I do believe that she has one of the most unique face-ups and I love it a lot because of all the violet tones in it. It pretty much starts with her eye chips. Because her eye chips are this deep, slightly reddish purple and I just think that they are so pretty on this Pulip in particular. Her eye makeup is also sporting these beautiful violet, purple and rosy red tones. And then she also has these beautiful ashy eyebrows which are very strict and fierce looking and I think that she is absolutely amazing thanks to them. And the same ashy color is actually also used on her lower lid and the outer corners of her eye and this gives her eyes a very defined look which fades to the side which I haven't seen on a pulip before 
and you can also see that she does not have a simple kitten flick but the upper lashes actually do cross each other and this is so amazing looking I really really love this detail the blushing is a very pretty earthy orange color which suits her coloring very nicely because she is one of the pale poolips. Aurora's lips are simply a league on their own. I love the dark rosy color. They are very full. They are glossy and beautiful. The edges of her mouth are also painted in slightly. And so I think that she is one of those girls who has a very pouty and pretty look but also a very brave and fierce one once you count in her eyebrows. So I think that she's absolutely amazing and special. When it comes to Miss Aurora's eyelids, they are not as out there as I thought they would be, but they are actually a more toned down but still very very pretty purple pink color and I think that the black eyeliner with the purple pink in combination with her purple eyeshadow does look really really lovely and there is still something very special about her eyelids. Here you can see her from the front. She's dreaming. Aurora's wig is so beautiful. It is very, very long. It goes all the way down to her feet, but I will show you in a second. You can see that my girl has some hair glued under her actual wig cap which is unfortunate but I just wanted to show you for this review and I'm going to fix it later on. And apart from that, I really love this wig. I love the color, I love the little bangs in the front. I think that this is so super cute and the bangs do grow longer on the sides. And the color is just the prettiest ginger color ever. I love its orange tones and how nicely it reflects the light. Here you can see it in the back in all its length. It does frizz out a little bit, especially towards the ends, but at the same time it is very very important for this doll's look to have this beautiful long red hair so i'm not going to do anything about it i just think that she has the perfect wig for her face when it comes to the stock as you can see here there are a lot of gear elements, a lot of brass elements and a lot of studs. So it all starts with this beige blouse with the puffy sleeves that she is wearing and even over here you see that you have fake pleather on the collar with two colored tones you have this very coppery color and then you have this dark brown and these are all intertwined with the beige fabric basically creating this crazy blouse with the ruffles on the sleeves as well as these very interesting cuffs I think even though it's on her elbow and then there's the corset on the corset there is mainly a golden print of different types of gear and then you have the belt 
which reflects the same type of pleather that you can also see on the collar. Let's talk about the skirt real quick because I think that this striped satin fabric is absolutely lovely and fits the theme to a T. It also has black lace on its hemline and two gears stitched onto it on the right side. You get a very detailed belt which is out of the darker pleather and embellished with lots more details of the copper pleather and more brassy elements like screws and studs. And you will also have spotted this type of fabric on the side which is Aurora's absolutely crazy but beautiful train. The train is actually fastened in the front with a tiny tiny black ribbon. In the back it brings so much drama and says that I am absolutely in love with it. I think that this train is Definitely a favorite in my book when it comes to over-the-top pulip stock items. It is a crazy mixture out of beige cotton fabric and this amazing black tulle. And you can see that the black differs in, in thickness while Aurora unfortunately does not come with a manicure. She does have this little pleather sleeve on her left arm and it closes in the back with velcro so you can easily take it off. And I just also wanted to show you the way how the sleeves are actually open and yeah another very very cute detail in my opinion. Here are the details of her left sleeve because they aren't the same and I do want to give you an in-depth look and you can actually also take these off so she is very original and very very interesting and well designed. When it comes to her boots they are absolutely amazing. I wasn't a big fan at first because they do have this light reptile look to them if you can see the way how they are printed. They are out of pleather with a very nice heel in the back and they are lace up boots and I just think that Groove does these types of fake leather lace-up boots so so well. We've seen variations of them on Puli Bloody Red Hood, Puli Cheshire Cat in Steampunk World and also Puli Laura. and I'm sure there are many other Pulips but those are the ones I know of. And then on top she is wearing little beige colored shorts and fishnet stockings. The last thing I need to talk about about Puliborora stock are these three little charms on the other side of her skirt which are attached to her belt and as you can see the biggest one of them is this big gear pendant and what I think is very very interesting about this is that it actually has a safety pin in the back so you can attach this somewhere on her clothes but I don't want to make any holes in them so I am just leaving it dangling over here. The next one is this big spike you can see here it's this big 3D brassy spike on a pleather patch with this golden gear print on it. This one doesn't have any safety pin in the back 
and the last pendant is very dainty and a simple brass watch and these three pendants always tend to kind of get lost in the back and the train keeps covering them so when she's standing on my shelf I always have to make sure to brush them forward just like Pulip Eos Aurora also does come with wings but I have to be honest you guys I could not assemble mine because the little bar connecting the wings did not want to cooperate and so I could not assemble them together but I'm going to show you how it is supposed to go on her back there you have the girl herself and now this part is supposed to go on over here which I have never tried before because as you can see it is kind of cinching her her stock but okay maybe maybe I don't even need the bar holding the wings together because this does not look bad even though I'm kind of afraid that oh no gravity got to it so yeah this is what the wings are supposed to look like I did not manage to get them on the same way like I did with Pulip Eos but I hope that you get the idea also just like with Pulip Eos these are massive and ah, as I was saying these are massive and take up a lot of shelf space if you would want to display your doll with them okay you guys we finished the review she is my little steampunk princess do you want to see her next to her bigger sister Eos? I think it's very interesting to see how their face-up style changed in about two years. So that's it for this video everybody. I thank you so so much for watching. I really hope that if you're looking for Pulib Aurora that you will find her. In contrast to Pulip Eos, she wasn't a limited release, but I know that it is kind of hard to find her nowadays. I was lucky and found her in Japan, so don't give up hope. And also, thank you so much for watching, guys. I am going to be doing lots of more videos, so please stay tuned. Have a lovely day, have a lovely week and thank you so much for watching. Bye!